All right, everybody, welcome to the Den um, of Sucker Case podcast. Uh, today, we have a special guest. Uh, this is our first guest on this show, and he is an engineer. And we're bringing him on because he has a lot of experience working with some high-profile artists in the music industry. He's got a lot of good knowledge when it comes to recording. And so hopefully this is going to be an exciting interview for you guys and those of you who are aspiring music uh, industry professionals, you know, whether you are a recording artist, an engineer, producer, I think you're going to be able to benefit from this conversation that we have. So I'm getting ready to bring in Reed. Um, he's an engineer over at Lost Boys Studio in Seattle. Uh, let's bring him in. Hey, Reed. You there? Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sir. I can hear you, man. It's good, brother. It is all good, man. We just want to get some, uh, start picking that brain and get some of that knowledge you got. Yes, uh, sir. I introduced you a little bit. Uh, um, I talked about uh, what you currently do. I know you're an engineer at Lost Boys, but we want to go back a little bit. And yes, just learn, learn a little bit about you before we dive into the music industry stuff. So talk to us about um, where you're from. Like, what was your early life like? I grew up in Montana, um, Bozeman, Montana, mostly. And then uh, my dad did a little hunting out in eastern Montana. That was his career. So that's how I kind of grew up in a smaller knit town, close community, one high school Um parents divorced at maybe nine years old sounds about right and then ever since then they they both stayed in Bozeman and stayed on like decent terms so it was just week on week off so oh, that yeah. was like kind of my life growing up was like everything you can fit in a backpack you know to bring to <laughs> one house to the other like that's how I'm living just like off the rip simplistic um both parents had decent jobs, you know, so like was super blessed that way. And uh, I was big into baseball and sports. Um, so that kind of feel out oh, uber competitive, like the most competitive, bro. I, I went bowling last night. Like I hate losing. So that, <laughs> and, and, and it'll like get me salty for a second. I'll catch my fire. I'm Ooh, like, that like, too. like, dude, just chill. Like you, yeah. you paid 20 bucks to come bowling with buddies, you know? Um, so anyway, grew up, did that. And then at 15, I moved so, out. Of the before before yeah. you go too far, before yeah. you go too far. So I wanted to backtrack. So you got, you talked, you mentioned your dad's a hunter. And I yeah. saw on Instagram, you got some cool hunting pics. Oh my, yeah. And you can't really see kind of, I have heads all over the room. Um, did that come before the sports or? That was my first love. Okay. Like literally, because my dad owned, has been an outfitter for now 30 years. He just kind of retired. Um, so it, it was, that means you own, you, you own your own hunting company. So you can have guides registered under you, um, and like run hunts. And he was like built probably one of the most well re reputable, uh, outfits in all of the u.s uh, i mean montana you know montana let, let alone the u.s so like i mean he sponsored got sponsored by yeti water bottles and coolers and sitka camo and like, he was just a hustler like and it was all him so that's all i kind of ever knew it was like he was hustling but it was a passion too it was follow your passion and do what you love so like no day feels like a day of work Right. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's how he lived. And I was like, oh my God, I envy that. And I still, I mean, I hunt. You guys are that in you too, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 1000%. Uh, so, what, so, what age did you, did you start hunting? Literally, as soon as I could walk, I was hunting. Oh, okay. Like, I remember running around with a BB gun, just like with my dad. Like, that's all I wanted to do go to the duck club. We, uh, my parents are from California, uh, San Luis Obispo and Modesto. So I kind of grew up till I was maybe eight uh, out there. And, but my dad would take trips out to Montana every year. So that was all I could, you know, like, what is he doing in Montana? So we finally moved there. Um, gotcha. 
and th- that was my first and it still is like my one fucking like I'm good at a, I always say I'm like I'm decent at a lot of things but like hunting is where like I'm like that's <laughs> I've done that my whole life you know like what kind so, of stuff are you hunting man like big big bucks and elk deer yeah big bucks elk deer um I've hunted mountain lions bobcats bears wow. goose ducks uh coyotes like I've done a a small share of trapping and trying to figure that out but that's like tough as hell mountain lions what's that like um dude that is maybe one of the i just got back a couple weeks ago that's where i went it's one of the craziest experiences ever it's like i was telling my because my uh some of my best buddies are all houndsmen so they have five plus to 15 hounds that they take care of year round and um like literally and then when cat season comes you are basically going out you need snow mostly in montana so some uh, areas have dry dogs in other parts of the u.s where it doesn't snow but those cat that's the only way you're gonna find those cats like all my life i've never seen one not in a tree getting ran by dogs so you drive around and you find a, a fresh track in the snow you identify it and then you dump your dogs on it and they follow the scent and run this thing until it goes up a tree that's right. Like any cat, like just like a house cat would go up a tree. So that's crazy. And yeah, but you, neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're going out there with full intention to just get yourself in the most fucked position possible. <laughs> like, middle of nowhere, no service, deep snow, cliffy mountains. Yeah. Like and, and it and they're frightening. Uh, but just like any cat, they're scared of dogs, you know? <laughs> Literally um okay so so you so the hunting you've been doing that since you were a kid um now you've gotten into hunting all kind of stuff and then oh yeah uh, you talked about about 15 years old you were about to uh, start talking about sports so my just how I did hunting baseball too that came first like early on and I was always freaking loved it and at 15 I moved out of the household Montana doesn't have high school baseball. So I moved to Idaho with a host family and like bounced around some host families in Idaho and played baseball. So I was on my own at 15, moved out like pretty much like a college student, right? Just renting a room from this family and learning how to live on my own, just like that. And uh, like, you know, taking care of my bills and getting myself to school and feeding myself, you know, like so did your parents support you on that or was that 1000% like okay. they we, we all sat down and it, they were cool with it obviously my mom was like being a mom about it you know just wants to see me and miss me you know so that was that but my dad was a huge baseball player so just like following in his footsteps pretty much and so, they, so in did, did you said in your town there was no high school baseball no high school That's baseball. Why you went and did that. Like I low key beefed with some of the baseball players there, and like I was, you know, just some shit like that. I don't even know. So when I left, it was like a big deal, right? But okay, gotcha. Now, in uh, how did that pan out for you? And did you continue like playing after high school? So I went to college. I got some scholarships uh, just at like junior colleges, and my senior year of high school, I tore my labrum, had surgery on it, so. As soon as I tore my labrum, I was like instantly redshirting freshman year of college, like worked my way back. I was in Eugene, Oregon at the time mm-hmm. um, at a JC. I lived on like UO campus. So it was s- sick. You know, the Oregon yeah. Ducks are playing football every Saturday, like sure. just the true college experience. <laughs> and then um, and then hurt myself again the next year. And then it was just like a turmoil. But my third and final year was at Shoreline Community College. Mm, okay. And then I, that's when I finally tore it for good. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. Like, Was oh, that how you ended up here? Yes. And okay. so I, I moved here. I get paired with these random roommates. Mm. Uh, and Trevor Rickson is one of the random roommates. Like, okay. And he's like, oh, I make music. Well, I had kind of been getting into. And hold on, before we go any further, for those of you that are watching, when I say he ended up here, Reed uh, and I are talking about Seattle. Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Washington. Exactly. Um, My second year of college baseball, I was in San Luis Obispo uh, at Cuesta College and I more random roommates. I'd always loved music, right? So that's when my fucking 
kind of dreams became a real not like I saw a bigger picture because my roommate had the you know the shield with the mic and the home set up on logic yeah uh, and that's where I was like this is kind of dope and I start so I got my own setup eventually and fruit loops and was just like yeah. then it was because I am musically like not that gifted and what age what age was that this is uh 19 years old Okay, so I thought just by the way I've seen you work in the studio, I thought it, I thought you've been doing this like way longer than that, dude. I was always like musically like not talented at all. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, you asked my family, it was like I I couldn't hold a note. I couldn't. Did you always enjoy uh, listening to music or I loved it? Okay. But I was always country from a young age. My mom got me into hip hop. She's got like really good music taste. Okay. Um, and it was actually like the first hip hop album I ever listened to was Drake. Hell yeah, fucking or like, hell yeah, fucking. But take care. Yeah, yeah. That uh -huh. album got me into hip hop, and then I just fell in love with Drake, and then party. I found Party Next Door off of that, and like, then I got Apple Music, and the whole <laughs> it just opened up like, for you. All that. Well, is your mom? Is she's the one from Modesto? Yeah, she's from Modesto. Yeah, when you so, said she's got hip hop taste, I'm like, she's got to be the one from Modesto. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know Modesto, then yeah, kind of, yeah, it's classic. Um, so okay, so 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 um, from a young age, you were listening to mostly country stuff, and you know what's crazy? I started listening to some uh, some country stuff, just diving into different genres and stuff. And I told uh, I told also, man, I'm like, dude, country is the lyrics are not much different from R and B. <laughs> well, exactly, and like. <laughs> I've especially when you strip down music yeah like for the Zach like the Zach Bryans for example if you don't know who that is like uh Tyler Childers you listen to this like real stripped down guitar and them singing and the songwriting of that oh yeah it everything out of the water yeah it does the song but you, can, you can apply that to hip-hop so that's where I kind of come at with music is I'm like you like if you listen to country like they're not rhyming all these words they're just like telling a story and how they say it makes it swag absolutely yeah you know um yeah. just like also like also so able to do that and like come up with these things and i'm like you're 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 storytelling and it doesn't have to all be like rhyme 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 like how hip-hop has been for the last 10 years like hip-hop's been trash i think in terms of yeah i think the story is blowing up yeah the storytelling is missing that's a lost art man mm -hmm. for sure so like you really gotta feel something now and like i mean you got songs like wop and <laughs> yeah. like, the ice spice one talking about farting or something like you know like <laughs> that is because i don't even know i couldn't tell you why but wild <laughs> right <laughs> the, man. so Okay, so so you get uh, tapped in to the to the Drake and start finding got a uh, party next door. You start getting your uh, you got your Apple Music account. Just go crazy. You got at this point, um, you know, but you could not sing, could not keep like maybe a BPM, could not dance, no rhythm. I'm white, like <laughs> like nothing. My like my sister was gifted, and I'd seen her play piano a few times and sing, but like both my parents not like liked music but never done it that okay. was never the thing and uh, then um so yeah fast forward to seattle shoreline washington i meet trevor rickson yeah we hit it off we're living together he introduces me to now milo eubank who i run lost boys with um yeah. and he now this Tre what's trevor's what's trevor's name what's his recorded name trevor rickson yep okay. Just, okay. just his straight I want name. People to know where to find his music. He, at. he is gas, like yeah, literally, like unbelievable. Um, him and O got some songs, but right. too and unbelievable, greatest dude. Like love Trevor. Um, best friends now. But I meet Milo Eubank, and he's okay. running Lost Boys at the time. Um, yeah. And he, you know, like I walk in, and he's platinum grammy nominated you know like got all the plaques got all the reputability runs this dope studio and i see this and i'm like whoa yeah how do i obtain to, how do you how do you get this job right why is this a thing and so then i i mean i fucking fell in love with the thought of it mm. and i just fucking worked 
Start going crazy. <laughs> Started going crazy. I, I went to LA for a year after that and tried to make shit happen, but LA never works. Um, mm. It's just never the vibe. So what was I your experience in LA. What it's was just too saturated, right? Okay. Yeah. So you you're, you're dealing with, and it's one. It's so expensive. So it's like, and I was just getting off and didn't really know what the fuck I was doing. I mean, I was making music, but it was fucking horrible, right? Like going through the motions, um, learned a lot. You were recording your own music at this time? On a ghetto little setup. Yeah. <laughs> and it sound, sounded probably fucking horrible. Like I know it does. I should play it sometime and just like <laughs> get embarrassed to be like, wow. you know, Or or inspired more so, you know, because like that's where the humble beginnings came from. Like that's where I came so from. So what'd you, what'd you, what, what came, what's the best thing that came out of your trip to LA? Like, what'd you learn from all that? I learned that I wasn't shit, mm. you know, like you had to put in some work. Everyone's trying to do this. Yeah. How many people from all over the world are trying to become a rapper? Mm -hmm. It's like making it in, um, it's, it's like making it in the big leagues, you know? Yeah, the, it's like that equivalent. Like exactly, yeah. So the hustle has to be so different. Yeah, you have to. The, you have. This is a fucking commitment. This is a life choice if you're gonna do that. Yeah, and, and if it's just a hobby, awesome. But I'm like, I want to make if this. Want to go? Yeah. If you <laughs> right. Yeah. It would be so cool to live that life. And so, um, did you work with any notable people down in L.A.? I had sat in on some uh, sessions. God, who's the dude who uh, did like Juju on the beat? Oh, I, man, I forgot. Ah, That's I don't I even know. I sat in with some few and, and worked with some different engineers. Nothing crazy, just because I had no connections and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Okay. Like I wasn't ready to be no sort of engineer. Yeah. I did my own shit, but like. I had no clue what I was doing on there. I just like kind of knew how to record something, get it in and like, you know, throw some reverb on it or yeah. whatever. Okay. Uh, gotcha. So now, so, um, you know, you're in LA, you like figure it out. I, man, I, this, I'm not shit. I gotta, I gotta really put the work in and get good. And then, so then you end up back in Seattle after that. So I was like, how do I do that? Okay. Well, I got to learn from, I got to learn from someone like that. So I actually, right before I almost came back here, I, I talked to Milo in Seattle and I was like, that's an option to go intern there okay. and go try to put in the work. I also had another dude that I'd met. I was working at this smoothie shop and he was this producer. He'd done a bunch of Mariah Carey stuff and like was fucking crazy talented. Um, and he had just like grown a liking to me making his smoothies. And we started talking about music and he's like, dude, I will offer you a job. So I had that on the table too, but I'm like, Milo is just the man. I love Seattle. I love, I love it up here. Like, yeah. Uh, so talk to, so, uh, so um, before, um, before you talk about uh, when you came back, just for context, yeah. uh, folks listening Milo, uh, can you talk about some of his accomplishments? You touched on it a little bit before, but like he's got some really sick accomplishments and uh, plaques. He so he's got the Macklemore downtown stuff and uh, Kesha uh, praying that whole album. Yeah. Um, but but the dope thing about Milo, which uh -huh. is so epic, is like I've I've talked you know I've known him for five years. I live with him. He's upstairs. Um, yeah. I'll find out about artists that he's worked with, like a boogie with the hoodie and like oh. he's dope. Like he, like T Grizzly songs are dropping like every other week that are mixed by him. And it, but you'll, you'd never know. And he's just like, like, I mean, literally he's recorded with so many people that it's ridiculous. And I'll be like, what about that? He's like, Oh yeah, I worked with them once. And it's just like, so humble, like, because it means that that's your credibility, but it like, to him it's just like another person which i always thought was like the most dope mm, okay i got you it's, it's like oh he makes a t grizzly song but you'd never really like he might post a little something but he'd he'd rather do it with someone who he's got like a personal yeah you know he's about it he, he's really he, about that life <laughs> he's really about exactly. it. and he <laughs> is right. like 
he is so talented and I mean, he went to school for it. Yeah. So like when you talk about knowing music in a different way, yeah. Milo knows it. Okay. Like ask him anything. Like I know how stuff sounds because um, I just learned off the rip and like how to have the concept of it all. But like he is so genius with it that it's just good to get that advice and opinion and ask questions and bullshit with him, you know? Yeah. I've seen uh, better. I've seen people who are the real deal mix songs and master, and it's a different level. When somebody okay. says mixing and mastering a song, but somebody who really knows how to do that, I mean, they're raising a point for a purpose. And like, mix, and oh, mix, yeah. It's coming out crispy. It's a whole different ball game. So, and that's what it like when you break down Milo, uh huh. I'll, and I, I've, especially recently, I've been having some crazy mixes, and I'm like, whoa. And then, Milo will send me one and I will be like the, and it's not like crazy shit, but it's the attention to detail. It's the little things. Yeah. Like cutting every bit of, you know, recording that doesn't have any voice, you know, like a, and lowering these breasts and just like really crisp reverbs that are calculated in and uh, delays that the compression just hits perfect. Like, it's just a different, like he will blow me out of the water with mixes. So it's like, it's good to be pushed in this. Constantly. Yeah. It's like, you're never content. And yeah. he says that all the time too. He's like, I never feel like, like, cause it's always changing too. The yeah. music game is shifting. Like, right. Sounds are always changing and everything like that. I don't so get ahead of back, the curve. So, so you come back from California and, um, and now you're, are, are you interning with him? I point? move here. I do not have a place to live. I'm <laughs> sleeping in my truck some nights on Trevor's couch. Uh, it, like there was these few few chicks that I would like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> pull, pull up, <laughs> need, to sleep, need to sleep at the crib. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was for like six months. I would, I got a little trip. I would trim pot right next to the old Rainier brewery studio. Okay. And then I would go over and sit in on Milo's sessions for, eight or 10 hours dang he he would start let me track and like get some of that and i would just sit in and help and listen and uh fly on the wall you know vibe out with the artists and get to know people and yeah and, uh that was yeah like six months of that okay until wow. milo had asked me to he bought a house and he's like hey come live with me like okay. let's and now then, boys that we both got the lost boys tag. oh damn <laughs> okay yeah so now so when you were sitting in on those sessions anybody notable any any notable artist that you said uh, in, you to work with at that point like there was like cha-cha malone which is this dope producer for jay park mm, okay. uh, was one of the dopest ever god there was so many like I'm blanking right now on who even came in. Like, I think we had, um, no, I guess that was just me, the lucky session. Um, but just like, just a wide array of artists that was like ridiculous. And he had rest in peace, Malcolm Rebel. Um, gotcha. if, if you don't know Malcolm Rebel, look him up. He He's, uh, it's vitamin D's son. He was, he would come to Milo like yeah, twice a week. Vitamin D. Yeah, and we would work on some of the dopest. Like he sounds like a mix between Future and his own Seattle West Coast. That was just mm. unbelievable. So for for me, it was like that was that music that Milo and him were doing. Like I would just like inspire, and he would let me fucking get in and like start mixing the shit and being really cool. That's so I was like, God damn, I'm really working on some music that's gonna change the world. That's awesome. You know? And that's when I first got that, like, wow, like to build that community of like an artist that, you know, personally and putting out that grade of music is a feeling like no other, like how I feel with a lot of people now. Yeah, that's cool, man. Awesome. So, all right. So from there, um, you know, obviously you're working with Lost Boys now, you're getting more experience and um, and now you're here and um, basically what uh what i would like to know at this point is where um where you feel like you're at and what you feel like the future is for you that's a great question i feel like 
the shit you have to have a mindset that is so far out of here yeah to make it work it like did. I mean, we're about to have two spots open for the first time, which has been our goal for the last five years. And that'll be any week now when they finish this. And I don't even feel like it's nothing. Mm. Like I want to fucking, I mean, I want to have a, a studio in Phoenix. I want to have a studio in Florida, you know, like or an Orlando market and just like run this empire of just great engineers homies experiences and you know so that for me that's awesome is awesome a plaque or one of those things is obviously always what somebody wants mm -hmm. um but i feel like that that just comes with staying genuine to the process for sure like yeah. I, I used to stress and be like god i need a plaque like yeah. i need a plaque this year you know and i was like now i'm like a plaque will come or, or it won't. Yeah. But that doesn't define what I've been able to do and accomplish, you know, yeah. like some people just get lucky with a plaque and they, you know, and it's not someone they know and the project fell on their lap. And I'm like, it, and if something like that happened to me, cool, it would, it, you know, hard work pays off, but. You just want to stay there. So much shit to accomplish in this game. Like I want, I want to, I want to go on tours with artists <laughs> And, you know, live that land, fucking go around the world and see different shit and make different kind of music and get inspired by other people. That's like, cool. That's cool. So. That's awesome. All right. So now when you talk about opening up other studios, that obviously that involves other engineers. So people that might want to uh, get in the game. So what yep. kind of advice would you have for somebody who wants to get in the game? Someone who's like you were, uh, what would you tell them at this point? We had kind of touched on it earlier, but um, you have to take this shit so serious. Like, sacrifice everything. I tell people all the time, if you want this career path, don't expect to be able to give time to, you know, maybe a female or or have children like, like people do when you're set up and stuff. But like, if you really want this shit to the utmost, you got to sacrifice a lot of you know, uh, night nights out, like you're not going clubbing, you know, like you're not like, that's when you're working. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, dealing with waking up and sending files. Oh, an artist calls you at 1 AM. He's on tour coming through town word, wake up and go to the studio and start a session at two. Damn. You know, yep. uh, It's nine fifteen AM. Like I don't do it as much anymore, but I mean, especially those first two or three years when I was just wanted it more. I mean, I would be at the studio till 10 30 AM or sometimes just take a nap on the couch and stay there for my next session. Yeah. Sleep in there type shit. <laughs> like that's if you, if you want to be an engineer and really do it for a living uh, and, and build something like, or, or producer or whatever, you got to do that. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, like, so what kind of, uh, if, if I were just starting out as an engineer or my, my, yeah, uh, my dream was aspiring as an uh, engineer. What kind of equipment would you say, like day one? What kind of equipment do I need to get started? Just at my home studio. Honestly, like obviously a, a, a computer that can run a DAW at a decent rate. Um, I would say get Pro Tools, but that's me just knowing Pro Tools. It's more so I think getting something. And if you really want to be an engineer specifically, Pro Tools, get it now, learn it. That's the easiest to work with. It's it's studio professional standard. That's what you're working on. Uh, get that and just YouTube tutorials. Okay. Learn how to work. <laughs> learn how to load shit in quick. Uh, make a hundred songs of your own and like, you know, learn how to put it together and, and experiment. Mm. that's the number like all you all you need is i mean you could i got this little blue microphone here this is what i first got when i started okay. blue microphone got it right here a focus right and that that is where you learn and then i mean you you can make this thing sound so great okay. i was doing it last night i stayed up till three with my buddy just at his house and we were just screwing around on a home studio, like 
like I would have five years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? um, and you, you, you still got to have that hunger. Yeah, for sure. So for those of you um, watching this, we're going to have some links in the description box to the, the stuff yeah. that you're talking about as far as the blue mic and then the focus, right? And the focus, right, is just an amplifier. It is just, yeah, just a little preamp. And if you want to, if you want to up that, the Apollo is great. Um, it, that's like a thousand bucks in that range. I mean, the focus, right. And the blue microphone, you could have everything for, you know, 400 bucks. Okay. And then the biggest thing is like get waves, audio plugins, um, you know, get, if you want to spend a little more money, get fab filter, get some plugins that you, uh, and really, if you get a waves bundle, you can make great shit off that, but get some plugins that don't sound like shit and try to build a template, right. That you can record in, and then you can fine tune mixes after always. So, okay. all right, gotcha. Turning knobs. That's yeah. the number one thing. Yeah. Um, now, so we talked a little bit about, um, about getting started and everything like that. Um, what would you say, not only for engineers, but, um, in your experience for any uh, music industry professional uh, on the marketing end, uh, what what have you seen that is working for people to be able to get their music out there more or their personal brand out there more? What what what's what have you seen work? I think that's that's the billion dollar question. Mm. I think no one knows that answer. I think. A million things work for a million different people, you know, yeah. like, I guess on the marketing end, I don't know as much about that. Um, just because I'm so like, so in tune with this. But what I do know about it is you got to be hitting vlogs up and getting getting write ups on your songs, doing videos, doing content like when you say getting write-ups, is that blog write-ups or blog write-ups? You you can get those out just so you have like an actual footprint of the music out there. Okay. Like look it up. It's a physical thing that's, you know, okay. um, that creates artists, you know, all all news is good news, right? It's you know, in people's all press is all press is good press. Right. That's the thing that if you look at these artists, like it, they're just constantly in your face with it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's the only thing that I know for sure works. Okay. I got you you. got to drop music, you know, Yep. got to drop music. You got to have people that genuinely love it. Like, I think so many people just don't drop music. Mm -hmm. They don't drop enough. No, enough. And I'm like, you're in the studio. You have all these songs. Why aren't you dropping? Yeah. All the time. Right. That's like, you know, showing up to a million practices and never going to the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Doing your homework and not turning it in. Yeah, exactly. Doing your homework and not turning it in. That's a great one. Yeah. So, so from your from your perspective, um, I want to shed a little bit of light because I've seen I've seen it uh, both ways uh, and just being just sitting in on studio sessions and stuff like that, where um, artists will come in. And also is one of these guys that people always compliment him where they're like, dude, you're the shit. You're super respectful. Yep. You're always on time. You know, yep. I, I love working with you. And then you got those other guys that people are like, I fucking hate this guy. So just touch on that. Like if somebody was to come work with you, how do they come correct? What's proper etiquette when, when working with somebody such as yourself? Definitely when you're getting to know someone, do not fuck with their time. You know, that's the biggest thing for me is like but yeah. also you, you, <laughs> so many of the artists i've worked with do that like ill chris i work with him all the time mm -hmm. you know when he books a session if he books a session at nine he's showing up 10 45 <laughs> like maybe a few times he'll pull up you know 9 30 yeah. But like, you know, he's going to be late. So, but with that, with that, I'm like, you're, you're paying. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell him straight up, like some, and, and sometimes I get it. If it's like, shout out El Chris. <laughs> like shout out El Chris. I'm like, but he, and it, he'll see this, he'll laugh. But um, 
he just always runs late. So like, there's also people like that that I'm like, but I also have developed a relationship and know that about him, you know? So, but yeah, if you're just getting into it and want to like, obviously your, your, how you present yourself on time, you know, respectful, courteous, that is number one. Like, yeah. and some of the most popping artists are that way. Yeah. Like, Wi-Fi's funeral just had him in the studio a month ago. Most respectful, humble guy ever. You would never know, mm. you know, like all his accomplishments, whatever. And then yeah. it's then it's the lower key, lower tier artists that think yeah. they're fucking, you know, their shit don't stink. So exactly. I would say just like really respecting. Yeah. All right, um, <clears throat> I've seen different styles. I've seen people that write. I've seen people that punch in, also punches in. And it's the craziest thing I've ever able to deliver like a, a really good product at the end. But um, have you seen a correlation between the styles like or just it doesn't matter. It's just kind of pick your poison. Or would you recommend somebody like learn how to punch in? I think the punching in method is super effective. Mm -hmm. However. I see both sides because some people's brains don't work in that capacity to generate new spark uh so quick and not get caught up so like sometimes i'll see with uh people who punch in they don't have as much depth to what they're talking about yeah yeah okay. that's where i'll be like you know you we should write this yeah I, I have a lot of artists like that like i'm just like hey let's we we have a hook down maybe like we're stuck yeah. nothing sticking let's write to this and come back so would you recommend uh for those artists who uh struggle with uh, depth would you recommend for those guys to come in with something already written maybe well because i i've also noticed when i make my own music i've i struggle with depth sometimes when i freestyle so what i've noticed works for me is i will constantly throughout the day i'll be thinking of something and hit it into my notes and just have an idea okay you know two bars or like that vibe like I wrote down, uh, Milo said the other day, he's like, oh, Whistler's like a postcard town. And I'm like, I wrote it in my notes. I said, oh, postcard town. That's mm -hmm. a cool concept. Like right. someone in a postcard town, like leaving, you know, and last night I worked on a song and like incorporated that. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, I think small little ideas like that. So when you get stuck, cause then you'll have times when you can kind of freestyle a little quicker, you know? Um, but some people just love to write. Yeah. I understand that level too. I wish I could sit down there and write like this and then go in and spin it. Yeah. But my brain don't work like that. Like I need to hear the beat and hear how my voice sounds on it and play with the auto tune. I think that would be maybe the one thing, the auto tune flexibility when you're freestyling is just, or punching in is uh, more open. You're not as caught in a flow, right? if you wrote it that way or whatnot. Oh, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like you have yeah. more ability to try fresh stuff without being caught and like, oh, I wrote it this way. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Brain is that way. Whereas like, you're like, oh, I don't like that tone. So you go up with it. Yeah, yeah. Or bring That's it back down to a different cadence or whatever. Yeah. And uh, when, I see, when, I, when I've seen you- freedom. When I've seen you engineer for Oso- and that made that that made that uh, make sense because yeah. you guys are working so fast. Like you guys are recording a song, I mean, twenty minutes, and it's yeah. like you guys are just punching in, moving so fast. I've never seen anybody work that fast. But I haven't been in that many sessions, but the, what yeah. comes out of it is still quality, uh, which is the best part about it. What what me and Oso are able to, the speed we're able to work at is actually, I've never had anyone that quick either, yeah, like right. close to it, but never that quick and that smooth. And part of that is we've worked so much now and we're, and we're like best friends that our brain, like we don't have to even talk. Yeah. Usually. You got to our silent. Like when he was posted up in the chair, laying down, I couldn't see him. <laughs> we knew exactly what, like, we didn't even have to say a word. I'll know exactly when he likes one. He'll know when I like one. And I mean, he just says one more, one more. That's his thing. So I'm like, we're good. And, but I mean, he's the only one that I think can work as quick as I can engineer. Like when he's rolling, 
it's just it's like art it's like one mumble and then he figures it out punches it in good one mumble pu- punches it in go and we're just like Zzz. i mean awesome. he can record a song quicker or just as quick as anyone who had something written all the way through i truly believe that yeah awesome. and that which is incredible yeah that's awesome all right so that's pretty much all the questions i have for you today yeah. um i do want to touch on so you said that you guys have um your first the lost boy studio is getting remodeled the one in, yep. in downtown seattle right soto yep Soto, okay. And then, so that'll be open. Do you have an idea when that one would be back open? Literally any day. Okay. You can get an email. Um, nice. You were able to go in there now and they have all the construction cleared. Uh, they were just fixing the floors. And then, you know, it'll be a week of moving some stuff around and getting some furniture and getting it set up. But then then we're dialed in. Nice. And then you guys have the one in Kirkland and that, that one's going to stay open. That one's going to stay open. Um. I'm going to be mostly managing the Soto spot and we got a few more engineers we're bringing towards the team and kind of letting shit fall into place. But like, it's going to be big plans to have too. That's awesome. Go over time, hopefully kind of take over just a little more. Oh man. And uh, we'll put the link for you guys watching. We'll put the link in the description for the Lost Boys yeah. website, as well as uh, Reed's personal landing page for those of you that want to work with him. And then, um, Reed, just tell us where we can find you, man, on social media. On social media, Instagram, it's N-F-T-U-A-T-I-O-N, infatuation. Uh, Beyond that, that's pretty much the only thing I really be running. Um, So hit me up on there. I'm responsive. So that's kind of how I do most of my business. And uh, on Apple Music, Spotify, you can listen to some of my music there, too, at at the same app. So. All right. That sounds good, man. Well, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. And for those of you watching, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you, G.